Hello guys, we're back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the time division multiple axis. Okay, guys, if I am uh, using the word time division multiplexing, sorry for that, guys, because I am 100% confused with these the two terminologies like multiplexing and multiple axis. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, so for this also, I'll be using the same concept of time division multiplexing, guys. Okay, yes. So in a TDMA, complete channel bandwidth is allotted to one user for a fixed amount of time slot. So basically assume that you are communicating in a landline which is a common landline, right? Yes. So here per user you will be getting maximum of 5 minutes guys. So here for 5 minutes you can talk and the next 5 minutes someone else will talk. After that next 5 minutes someone else will talk. So in that way, so here you are given only 5 minutes to talk. So what we are dividing? The time we are dividing. Here both the frequency is kept constant guys, okay? Yes. Okay, so in TDMA, com complete channel bandwidth is allotted to one user. So basically here the channel bandwidth or the frequency is kept constant for everyone. But only thing is the time is divided. Okay, so it means each user can use the full bandwidth available, but only for a fixed amount of time. So this is divided, sorry, this is time. So time is divided, not frequency. Okay, yes. So I hope everyone got some basic idea about this time division. So it could be of a synchronous or asynchronous. Synchronous means we already defined the slots. Like each user will get only 5 minutes maximum. That's it. So asynchronous is nothing but dynamically will be allotting. So based on their requirement. So if one came and he told I want 1 minute. You'll be giving him 1 minute. If 2 came, he want 2 minutes. You'll be giving him 2 minutes. If 3 came, he want 1 hour. You'll be giving him 1 hour. So in that way. So asynchronous. It is There is no fixed time slot. So in synchronous, they are fixed. Okay. Yes. So I hope everyone got some basic idea, right? Yes. So let us continue with the code division multiplexing. Okay. So in code division multiplexing, we'll be taking an example guys, like how exactly this multiple access will be done. So how data is sent without any kind of interference and without any kind of issues. Okay. Yes. So code division multiple access is nothing but CDMA. So here message signal is a multiplied by a very large bandwidth signal called spread signal or pin code. Okay, so whenever I told multiplication, okay, so I think you will be recalling some things, right? So this is also some kind of encoding scheme and decoding scheme, guys. Okay, yes. So all users use the same carrier frequency and transmits simultaneously. Okay, guys, once let us go through the theory, then we'll be going through the process, guys. Okay, so each user has his own pin code. Okay, yes. So the process is the first step is each station or user has his own unique code. So basically he has his own unique code and he also has his data like what he wants to send that also he'll be having. So first let us go let us observe the example then we'll be uh, parallelly moving on. Okay. Yes. So here we are having four stations S1, S2, S3, S4. So each and every one is having a single bit data either it is plus one or minus one and they are having some code which is in terms of a four bits guys so here we are having four stations so i give four bits here he is having all ones one minus one plus one minus one one so okay one one minus one 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 minus one minus one one so this is the code which only this user knows okay and this is the data which they want to send okay yes so note any code with itself multiplied should give the maximum number of a cells contained Okay, so this is a simple logic guys. So if you multiply this with this itself and you add them all. Okay, so you should get the maximum number of stations. So here we are having four stations. Multiply it, you'll be getting one. Similarly, multiply it, you'll be getting four. Multiply it, so basically one into one is a positive one, right? So negative one into negative one is positive one. So at the end, you'll be ending up at four only, right? Yes, so any logic it might be. So that is the that is a small funny thing here. Okay. Yes. And the second logic is, and if you multiply with some others, you should get zero. This is really important guys. So this thing will change, will change the situations. So if you multiply this one, 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 four ones with this one. So here we are having one into one is a one, one into minus one is minus one, one into one is a one, one into minus one is minus one. So we got zero. So in this way, if you multiply any two, you should get a zero. Okay. Yes. So if your code is satisfying that also, then the next step you will be doing is now perform CI into DI and some all of them. That is nothing but Sigma I equal to one to N CI DI and send it. That's it. Simple. Right. Yes. So simply you'll be multiplying it. So I multiplied it here guys. So C1 into D1. So minus one into all positive ones will result in all minus ones. Similarly, 
CD is a 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 into plus 1. So we'll be getting the same 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1. Similarly, D is equals to minus 1 and multiply with this. So minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Yes? Okay. Okay, so in that situation, sorry for this guys, I think it is wrong. Minus 1 minus 1. Okay, yes. Similarly, C4 into D4. So multiply these to 1 minus 1 mi minus 1 and positive 1. So we got it. So now you multiplied it and you need to add it. So if you recall, that is nothing but multiply and add them, right? Yes. So now I added them. So at the end, I got a 0, 4, 0, 0 as the data. So this data is a sent from the sender side to the receiver side. Okay. Okay. So assume that we are sending the data from this person to which this person let us take. Okay. So from S1, we are sending to S2. Okay. Yes. So you want to send the data, right? Yes. So whenever R1, if you want to decode, like what is the original data? So basically the receiver, once he receives, he will be decoding it, right? Yes. So to decode the data, so assume that you are doing reverse process R1. Okay. Assume that this data minus one is received by S4. So what S4 will do is S4 will take the data and the key which he used, sorry, which he will take the data which is passed here, this data, 0, 4, 0, 0 into 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay. He'll multiply it and divide by the number of stations. Okay. So whoever received R1, he'll be taking the R1's code. R1's code is all ones, guys. He'll be taking this data and he'll be multiplying it. So he'll be getting this. Then he'll be dividing by 4 to get the result. So he got minus 1. So in that way, it will work, guys. So similarly, let us do it here only for this S2. So S2 code is 1, minus 1, positive 1, minus 1, right? Yes. So in here, we got a 0, 4, 0, 0. So if you multiply it, Okay, so just give me a second. Okay, so if you multiply it, sorry, it should be minus 4, right? Okay, so it's my bad. I wrote plus 4. Okay, minus 4. Okay, so 0 into 0 is 0, 0. Minus 1 into minus 4 is a positive 4, 0. So we got 4 and we will be dividing 4 by 4, right? So we got 1, so positive 1. So in that way. Sorry guys, I, I wrote here positive 4. That is what, that's what made me a bit confused, okay? Yes. So at the end, we'll be getting the data in that way. So similarly, if you perform for R3 and R4 also, we'll be getting the data. So hence, we got the data also perfectly. So this coding process is used to send multiple data. So if you observe here, here three members of data is sent at once by using our coding method. So once it is received using their code, we can decode it, right? Yes. So this concept is code division multiplexing so i hope everyone is now sorry multiple access okay yes so i hope everyone is now 100 percent with the, all the four methods of multiple multiple accesses so in the next lecture we'll be comparing all of them guys so we discussed them individually right so even let us check the comparison like how it looks so basically this comparison question is commonly asked in our examination so please let us meet in the next lecture guys okay yes thank you thanks for watching